Do you procrastinate sometimes? I'm a teacher, and when my students leave studying for an exam until the last possible moment, they pull an all-nighter, in which they try to cram everything from the entire school year into their head the night before the exam. If you admit it, which you did, thank you, sir, like me, and you sometimes leave things to the last minute, then you have something in common with two of the greatest leaders, two of the greatest visionaries of the past 50 years. Nelson Mandela and Steve Jobs. You see, both of these men left things to the last minute. Now, how do I know this? Am I making this stuff up? Don't say no. The, <laughs> the answer is, it's in their writing. You see, both of these men sometimes cross their T's to the left. Handwriting and first of all, I'm fascinated with handwriting analysis. It shows you what lies beneath the surface and shows you. That your first perception of another person is not everything. That your leaders, your heroes, the person beside you, yes, ma'am, the person in front of you, are so much more than their signature. So earlier today, you were asked to write on a piece of paper. I've been bugging you, walking around during the break, and telling you to write something. Get that card out in front of you, if you will, please. And for those of you who are watching this at home on YouTube or in the TED community, why don't you join us? And why don't you write down? How to spot or recognize a leader in their handwriting, and over the and sign your name, and over the course of the next few minutes, compare your signature and your writing to the leaders that we look at. Now let's take a look at some leadership traits that you have in common with some extraordinary leaders. Harvard Business Review did a survey of tens of thousands of workers around the world, and they asked them, "What's the number one leadership trait that separates a work a leader from a non-leader?" You know what they said? 72 percent vision, the ability of a leader to look into the future, to define a shared purpose for the organization, to give the workers a sense of meaning, and, a, and a, articulate a hopeful new direction. And that's what Mandela did. And that's his T. That's Mandela's T. Beside it's an H. Do you notice that the line is right at the top? That represents a achievable, really high long-term goal. You know what I found fascinating? You know who else has this? Steve Jobs is the top one. Abraham Lincoln is the next one, and the third one is Albert Einstein. How cool is that? All these leaders—they have this one thing in common. Now, if you're looking at me and saying, "Okay, I don't have that T," but look, do you have that T? If you don't, well, guess what? Neither does Nelson Mandela at times, because that's also from Mandela's tees. And what that shows you—that's called a practical tee. That means you're setting goals. If you have this tee, look, look. If you have this tee, it means you're setting day-to-day -day goals. That you're plan. That you like everything planned out ahead of time. And you're thinking about right now. You're thinking, what am I going to do when I leave TED? I'm not thinking about five years from now. And it shows. It showed me that you need a balance of being an effective leader. Between the long-term vision and the day-to-day -day goals of the organization. Now, I was sitting with my wife much earlier, and、uh, actually, I was standing and I was talking to someone in here, and they probably know who I'm going to be talking about because I was talking to them. And this person started a new company, and I could tell by the way he spoke, by the way he carried himself, that he was going to that he set high goals and that he was going to reach them because of his confidence. Now, you can see confidence in the first well-shaped letter of your signature. So if you look at Oprah Winfrey, look at the O. See how big that O is compared to the rest of the letters. And look at this next one, Richard Branson. Sir Richard Branson, the entrepreneur. The B in his last name is much bigger or well shaped than the rest of the writing. If you have a high T bar plus you have that type of an O or that type of a B, that means that you set high goals and that you are definitely going to achieve them because you have that type of confidence. Often with self-confidence, there's self-reliance. Self-reliance.、Uh, Emerson, the writer, called it、uh, trusting yourself and being a non-conformist, doing the difficult things that you have to do to get your goal done, even though you don't want to do them. And self-reliance can be seen with a stroke under the name. If you have a stroke under your signature, that represents self-reliance, or it can be some kind of squiggly line. And、uh, this could be said for that's Indra Nooyi, the CEO of Pepsi Signature. Who, in 1979, while a student at Yale University, went for her job, for her first job, and she went in for the job, 
wearing a new suit that she paid for with that job, and she got rejected. And she said to her professor, "What happened?" And her professor said, "The next job interview, be yourself." So she wore a sari in her second job interview, and she got the job. And what that taught her is always stay true to who you really are. You know who else I like? Any football fans here? World football? Okay. One of my favorite sporting personalities, even though I'm from Canada, we still like football or soccer, is Jose Mourinho, the coach of Chelsea. Now, Jose Mourinho, if you know anything about him, if you don't, it doesn't matter. He really is independent of the good opinion of other people. He doesn't care what you think about him. He makes his own rules, and he's been very successful at that. Jose Mourinho also has this streak under his name. On the plane, I read this article, and it said 95% of the ocean remains undiscovered. Like we don't know what's going on underneath. That's how I feel on the first day of classes often, where I look at my student's name on an attendance sheet. I don't know anything about them. It's pretty intimidating for a teacher on the first day. You see the kids looking at you like this, <laughs> and the, you know some of the girls rolling their eyes, and and the guys with their hands in their pocket. A couple of years ago, I taught overseas, and I remember uh, uh, this young woman who seemed really intelligent in terms of the brief interactions, but she was totally disengaged. I felt like a failure. We were talking about I, I, I just couldn't reach her. But I saw on the first day of class when I asked them to write a paragraph, this, this is from her writing, and what this shows is creativity. And、uh, I gave the students an assignment to write a song, and. That song was so moving that I asked my friend, who's a, a New York City music producer, to Skype into the class and to listen to all the student songs. And he pointed, he singled this girl out, and he said to her, "That was one of the most moving songs I've ever heard a young person write. Can I take that song and can I distribute it and help get it out to North American music producers across everywhere?" And that was the first time I equated this crazy thing I do, handwriting analysis, to teaching. At first, all you see is a name, until you really get to know that person beside you or in front of you, and see what lies beneath. Fast Company magazine did a survey of 1,500 CEOs across 33 different industries in 60 nations, and you know what they asked those CEOs? What is the number one leadership trait the CEO looks for today? And you know what they said? Take a guess. What do you think they said? Handwriting. Not handwriting, but it's in handwriting. <laughs> Creativity. And innovation—that's what they're looking for today. And you can see creativity in the following ways. That's Walt Disney's first letter of his, of his signature. That's a W. See those upper loops? If you have upper loops in your name, that represents abstract imagination. You're very good in generating ideas and and really getting other people excited about them. If you really believe in them. Next one, Frida Kahlo, the artist, who is both a good artist and a writer. Again, look at the loops. John Lennon. That's the H in his first name and the L in his second name. Again, very good abstract ideas. Michael Jackson. Look at the J. Upper loop and the lower loop. I'm going to talk about the lower loop in a minute because some of you will probably have that. Next. Now this one. This is Bono. This is Bono's lower loop. And if you have a lower loop, I think you have a lower loop. It's a creative problem solver. It means that you like to really create and build something. And if you have a combination of those, then you really have a kind of whole creative instinct or personality. What I like, what I found cool about this is, you see that under his name. Just go back. It says Dublin, which is where he's from. So he equates his creativity or his gift to the world with what he does for a living. Well, did I say that right? Yeah, he equates his creativity with where he's from. Now you would expect the treasury, the, the, the head of the treasury of a country who is in charge of billions of dollars, 14 billion dollars a year to be exact, would have writing that looks like this. Now this is analytical writing. For those of you who are involved in, in business in some way, that means when you have a shape like this at the bottom of your letters, especially the M's and N's, that represents analytical thinking. And if it's reverse, that represents you like to investigate deeply into a subject. You wouldn't expect it to look like this. Now this is the actual handwriting, most of the signature of the sec Secretary Treasurer of the United States, Jack Lew. Now at first I thought, wow, I, I judged this. I said that, that's crazy. But then I thought afterward, wait a second. Jack Lew is a 
he thinks outside the box. He's a creative problem solver. And in today's world in business, you need to be both an analytical thinker and a creative problem solver, like a Jack Lew, like a Steve Jobs, like a Richard Branson, like an Indra Nooyi. You have to have all those things. So then it made sense to me. All these are great, but if you don't have this last one, none of these matter. And that's integrity. Leaders who walk their talk, who live their highest truth. There's a story I really like about Gandhi, in which a young son, she took a mother took her young son to see Gandhi, walked a great distance, finally arrived, pushed through the throngs of people, and then said, she had her one moment with Gandhi, the one question, what would you ask Gandhi if you had one question? And she said, Gandhi, can you please tell my son to stop eating sugar? <laughs> And Gandhi said, no, I cannot tell your son to stop eating sugar, but you can come back in one month. The mother was in shock. She was angry. How could Gandhi not approve her parenting? But she came back one month later. She pushed through the throngs of people. She saw the great leader one more time. And then this time, Gandhi recognized her and said, leaned down, embraced the boy's hand in his own and said, my child, you must stop eating sugar for it will rot your teeth. Hugged the boy turned it back toward the mother. And the mother was perplexed, but she said, Mahatma, why didn't you tell him that one month ago? And Gandhi said, well, one month ago, I was still eating sugar. <laughs> <laughs> Which just shows that a leader walks their talk on the big vision and on the, also on the little things. Now, you can see integrity or honesty and frankness in handwriting, in the O's, the circle shapes. Check this out. The second O on the top, that's Gandhi's O. That means clarity of integrity. Or he's, he's very honest. But look at the other one, the first one. There's a line through it from left to right, which represents secretiveness, a little private secretiveness. The bottom one is another leader we equate with magnanimous integrity, Mother Teresa. Now, what this showed me was our leaders are just as frail and vulnerable and human as all of us. And you can have these paradoxical traits within you and still lead with integrity. When I was 12 years old, and a few people asked me this, so now I'm going to tell you, how did I get involved in this? When I was 12 years old, I saw my mother do something extraordinary. I saw her analyze the handwriting of a famous hockey player of the Toronto Maple Leafs, our local hockey team. And I saw her do this again and again with strangers and restaurants and people that we would meet. I know that's a bit weird, you know, like, Mom, what are we doing today? Let's go analyze random people's handwriting. <laughs> Every time she did it, though, I saw something fascinating. It gave people hope. It gave them a sense of something that lay dormant, that maybe they forgot about. And I'm going to do that right now on the spot. I'm going to analyze someone's handwriting that the TEDx team has put on my slide, and I'll be seeing it the same time you are. On the spot, right now, whew, I'm going to analyze their writing and tell them a few things that I think would make them a good leader. Okay, let's see it. This person is very direct. They, when you speak with them, they get right to the point. They have good intuition about people. I'll tell you why, first of all. The directness comes in, there's no added flourishes in any of the writing. See how it's the how? Boom, boom, boom. There's no extra lines. The O's are relatively clear, which means there's one that's not, but for the most part, Gandhi's mostly were clear, so don't worry, I'm not saying you're a liar. Most of your, most of your O's are pretty honest. So this person, most of the time, 95% of their life, is someone you can trust on, you can trust because they tell the truth. Now, here's the thing. This person is trying now to, they watch what they say. They're a little bit cautious. You can see that because on the A in leader, it's hooking around a bit, yet it's open. If it's open, it means talkativeness. If it's hooked over, it means that they're trying to stop it. They have a, a dot on the eye that's pretty pronounced. That means loyalty. That means someone pays close attention to detail. This is a person who's had some of the same friends their whole life and that they're, they don't let friends in easily, is that they really, you really, they really need to be trusted. Um, okay, their signature. Okay, that upper loop, that means more someone who, is, um, who has a deep grasp of any type of spiritual or abstract idea that they put their mind to. You see how it goes across like that? That's drive, that's energy, that's determination. Yet a little bit of cautiousness. <clears throat> uh, who are you? Can you stand up? Okay, sir. Well, uh, can I ask you, by the way, what do you do for a living? I'm in government finance. Governing, government finance. 
Okay, so government finance. So government finance, you need to really get right to the point in terms of you're dealing with numbers, you're dealing with, you need to have integrity, which you do clearly by this. You need to also um, deal with people without any type of unnecessary um, um, wordiness. They, they, want, you know, they want no you know, BS. They want you to get right to the point, and I see that in you. I also see you as a man who's, who has a great deal of depth in terms of your spirituality. I think you're someone who's open to ideas and really grasping those ideas in your life. And um, uh, you're loyal. You've had some of the same friends your whole life. I think you're someone who um, really, people who know you as a friend, really count on you as a friend, and you're someone who they can talk to, they can listen to, but yet you only speak when you really have something to say, um, and those friends count on you, and they listen to you when they get to know you. Thank you. You see, handwriting analysis gave me a shy 12-year-old boy who was terrified of speaking in front of others the realization that I had it within me to express myself with words, and I had the power and the vision to do it one day. And now, 27 years later, I'm in a castle <laughs> in Wilts, Luxembourg, standing in front of a, t a packed TEDx audience with all of you. And that vision, that dream came true today. You see, hope is the word that you write of what you want your future to hold. It shows what exists when no one else does. No one can extinguish that passion without your permission. Strangers, it may be invisible to strangers, it may be even invisible to yourself, but it's there. And it's here. I ask you, I plead with you to write more. It's not a lost art. To write down your vision, to write down your goals, to write down what inspires you, to write what you're grateful for, like Oprah does, and Richard Branson, and Sheryl Sandberg, and Jose Mourinho, and Gandhi, they all wrote down what inspired them in their life in a journal. And I ask you one more thing, which is uh, cross your T-bars high and create a vision that inspires you and underline your name and be proud of who you are and be true to your own path. Look at your writing. All you have to do is look at your writing. You all have the power to lead. All you have to do is look inside yourself. Thank you.